Boom! What is up everybody? Welcome back to Mount Mograph. As always, my name's Matt and in today's video we have Summit 64 Quick Render Clouds. Uh, so this is something that we're going to use Cinema 4D to build. Um, and basically this is going to be a way to build something like a cloud fly through or add that extra touch of realism to your renders without taking the hit on render time. Uh, so sometimes you can use something like uh, Thinking Particles or other particle programs and your render time is just get cranked way up there until they're almost not worth putting in your projects. So I'm going to show you a cool little technique to make clouds and actually you can use this technique to add tons of stuff to your projects um, in a really unexpected and easy way. Uh, so this is going to be Summit 64 Quick Render Clouds. Let's jump into it. So surprisingly, the first step is not going to be jumping into Cinema 4D. Uh, the first step is going to be hitting up our good old friend, the internet. So open up your browser here, and what you're going to do is use, um, well, you're actually going to use a cloud PNG um, to help us build this effect. I'm going to show you the easiest way to set this up. So if you type in cloud PNG in Google, um, hit up your images here, uh, go to search tools and change your size to large because we're going to want to work with really high resolution images. Um, as you can see, you're going to want actually to pick the ones with a black background that generally means that they have a transparent background or an alpha background um, which is going to be the key to this uh, whole little setup we're gonna do so grab whatever you like uh, I kind of like this one I'm gonna view the image it's probably gonna download really really slow my internet is super fast and uh, the image is kind of large oh look at that it actually uh, downloaded properly so I got that on my desktop um, and I may as well grab another one while I'm here I will just go ahead and view this image as well. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so I should, um, in theory, have two um, PNGs on my desktop of clouds. So as you can see right here, uh, it's white. And you actually, it looks like there's nothing there, but that's because we have a transparent white image on it. So I'm going to go ahead and name this uh, maybe cloud one. And I will name this one cloud two. So once we have our two clouds, uh, named properly, we're going to go ahead and jump back into Cinema 4D. Uh, so this is something that you could generally, or not generally, you could normally use something like projection mapping, um, but I've had bad luck with that setting this effect up, so I came up with a cool little workaround that seems so incredibly easy uh, that you guys will probably laugh at it, but I promise that it works well. So uh, grab one of your images, and actually if you use your finder or in Windows, um, your info, um, your information, you can see that the dimensions pop up here. So what we're going to do is create a plane object. So up in your primitives, grab a plane object, and you're going to change your width and height to match uh, the dimensions down here. Uh, so we can literally just line up this picture exactly what we need. So I'm going to do 3,109. If you don't have the same images um, as me, don't worry about it. Just use whatever your numbers are. So 1696, uh, and there we go. We got this giant plane. Uh, and so the trick here is going to be to create a new material. So double click in your material manager or editor and what we're going to do is click onto our color and just drag your cloud PNG, the first one, into your texture and then just click no. And as you can see, it looks like nothing has happened other than put this PNG onto our material. So when you drop this on your object and render it, you're just going to have uh, pretty much an untextured plane, which is no good. So I am using R16, so I'm going to actually turn off reflectance. Um, if you have R15 or anything else, just turn off the specular channel that is on by default. And actually uh, click your alpha channel and check that on and drag your PNG into the texture here. Now since this is a PNG, it's going to have the black background or the transparent background and also the white portion of the image since it's a cloud. So I'm going to say no once again. And as you can see, we're using the black portion to cut out the white portion of our image. So we now have, um, if I do a quick preview, we have this cloud um, in no time at all that's just actually in our 3D project. Obviously it's a flat plane. I'm going to show you a couple techniques to kind of fake making this object look bigger than it is and look three-dimensional. So let's go ahead and actually load our other um, cloud in here. So just select it and we're going to take a peek at our dimensions once again and create a new plane. Uh, so the dimensions here are going to be 3033 uh, by 1640, at least for me. And I'm going to drop the cloud PNG into a new material onto the color, turn off my reflectance. So cloud PNG on the texture of the color, click no, uh, go to your alpha, go ahead and put the cloud to PNG in the texture there, click no, and drop this guy onto our second plane. So I'm going to go ahead and name this, um, if I press the right buttons, uh, plane 1 is going to be cloud 1, and plane 2, or plane point 1, is going to be cloud 2. 
So now that I have those uh, together, I'm going to go ahead and snap this full screen again. And if I go and put these side by side, uh, we have these really great looking clouds. Um, I'll show you how to fix that little image. Um, we have these really great looking clouds um, inside our 3D application. So how is this going to be helpful? Well, when you have a 3D environment, you want to add that extra depth, especially if you're doing or trying to do a realistic render. And if you want things to kind of react with the environment or have a parallax movement or something like that, it's nice to have real objects. So I used to use uh, thinking particles to make clouds. Uh, and honestly, the render time started to get absurd. So this was something I came up with. Once again, it seems incredibly easy, uh, but I'm going to walk you through a couple little steps that will be helpful. So if you grab you, either one of these clouds or planes and right click it, Cinema 4D tags, and go down to your, uh, what, what do you want here? You want your look at camera option. So click that and it's going to look like it disappears, but it's actually flat facing the camera. So if you press C on your keyboard and make this object editable and click your anchor point um, or enable axis modification tool or press L on your keyboard and press R for your rotation property uh, just hold shift and rotate this 90 degrees uh, and then unclick your axis modification and that means the object is always gonna face the camera so when you're in a 3d scene uh, you can kind of fake that um, dimension because it's always going to be facing the camera so you're never going to see that it's a totally flat object um, in theory uh, even if you tilt up and stuff you're always going to have that kind of fake object um, or at least it's always going to be facing properly so that is the first technique I'm going to go ahead and just delete that um, look at camera tool and reset this object uh, maybe also reset the axis modification on here uh, there we go and I'll do the PSR update so it snaps back to the middle and I now have these two side-by-side -side images so as you can see these two images are on the same exact plane and we're having this weird intersection I issue so I'll show you how to fix that uh, and first we're going to actually make a, a better looking cloud so what you're gonna do is just hold command and and drag out a couple copies of this cloud and and change the uh, Z um, axis a little bit on them so they're all at different depths and as you can see all of a sudden our cloud is starting to look more like a cloud and it's having all that kind of realistic movement I'll hold command and drag this one out uh, maybe rotate this 180 degrees so it looks a little different I can scale this down and if you hold shift it'll look proper and as you can see all of a sudden we have um, once again we're getting that little problem we're starting to get this really really cool and uh, dimensional looking object this cloud uh, so what we can do um, with this cloud object is uh, right click any of these properties and go down to cinema 4d tags and go down to the vibrate tag and this is going to actually shake around our object a little bit if you don't go and enable the position uh, you can turn your amplitude up to maybe like 50 50 and you can keep the Z at zero and now when I play this scene we're gonna get a little shake on our cloud um, or a vibration I'm actually gonna go to display and change it to garage shading so we can see a little bit better and uh, let me go and change the frequency to like 0.2 and I'll actually hold command and just paste this onto all of our cloud properties uh, so each of these vibrate tags just change the seeds so they vibrate at a different frequency frequency essentially um, in different time and now when I press play we have this really nice looking cloud you know you have that kind of nice uh, movement so when you take this object and you put it into a null and just call this maybe like uh, root cloud or something and you right click it and go to cinema 4d tags and you say look at camera and then once again uh, press C uh, so it's editable and press L on your keyboard for your axis modification or click this little icon uh, and change your rotation so it's actually facing the camera again 90 degrees and then undo the axis yeah, modification kind of by clicking the, the button the, now you're gonna have this the scene for you moving around on the scene and also facing the camera so all of a sudden you have another dimension to this object in a really really easy and simple way and as you can see it renders really really nice so as you can see when we're looking at this we kind of have this weird uh, some some weirdness going on um, if you look closely you'll see that there's actually some shadows um, in in a way if you look closely you'll see that the shadows are actually kind of these square objects and that is because our planes um, as you can see are actually casting a shadow on our other clouds so in order to fix this you're gonna right click go to cinema 4d tags go down to compositing and we're gonna go to our tag properties and unclick cast shadows receive shadows uh, check on compositing background and uncheck scene by rays and then we're gonna right click our tag and go down to copy tag to children and then just uh, 
do command R to preview this again and you'll notice that our nasty square shadow is actually gone um, and this is just changing the properties so that these planes are unable to cast a shadow on the other objects and they're also not accepting the shadows from them if they are casting anything so you're back to having that realistic looking uh, shaking little cloud that I swear looks awesome in 3d renders if you have something realistic um, it's that little touch of realism um, that is really nice to have in a scene. So let's go ahead and jump to something also that's pretty cool. We're going to do the cloud fly through once again using super simple techniques uh, to get this cool look. So if you go into your primitives and grab a cone object, uh, just rotate it a little bit, uh, 90 degrees here, and scale it up. No problem at all. Uh, and let's make this a little bit bigger. And we're going to go into our cone properties and change our top radius up. So now that we have that, uh, let's go ahead and grab a MoGraph cloner and we're going to grab just any of the clouds you want. You can uh, turn off the vibration tag and just drop your uh, cloud into the cloner and you're going to see that we have a ton of them. I'm going to go ahead and scale the object down a little bit. Go into the cloner and what we're going to do is change the mode to object and we're going to drop the cone into our object property for our cloner. So it's going to look insane. Um, <laughs> I'll do a preview render just so you can see how stupid this looks. We have just this horrible mess of cloud planes on our primitive. So first thing, I'm going to hide the cone from our renderer and our picture viewer by holding option or alt and double clicking uh, the traffic signals. Go into your cloner and we're going to change our distribution to volume. So what this does is it puts all the clouds inside of our cone and then I'm going to actually scale down these uh, clouds a little bit more. So as you can see we have a ton of these clouds um, actually sitting inside of our cone. So if I do a preview render, you're going to see that we now are starting to have this uh, kind of this depth. Um, and when we move our camera through it, you're going to see um, that we're going to have the transparency of alphas. Uh, once we do a couple more tweaks, we're going to have the transparency of our alpha or PNGs uh, playing into this and making it look a little bit more realistic, which will be really, really cool. So I'm going to scale these down just a touch more. And what we're going to do is do something to tweak it. This is normally a problem. Uh, sometimes you get these planes touch each other and an easy fix for this if you notice any problems um, and what I'm talking about is when these planes if I can grab them actually intersect each other you'll get this weird kind of uh, digital distortion and by some luck I it looks like I actually didn't get them which kind of stinks for this example but it's kind of nice if this was a real project um, and in order to fix this what we're gonna do uh, right click our cloner and we're gonna go down to uh, simulation tags and go down and click rigid body and we're going to go to our let's see here force we're gonna turn our inherit tag on apply tag children so that's saying all the clones are affected by this tag we're gonna go to individual element elements and change it to the top level so only the first uh, children if you had two children in there um, and then what we're gonna do is just uh, toggle forward a little bit in time so go back to the beginning and just go forward a couple keyframes here uh, something like this and you're going to notice it's starting to fall um, but also if it any of these objects were touching each other they'd be pushed apart uh, so you would fix this overlap problem. Next we're going to go ahead and just press C on our keyboard to make our cloner editable and that will also remove our rigid body tag and make all of our clouds um, a real object which is nice and no, they won't move anymore. So we've now fixed our digital distortion problem. Uh, so the next step here is going to be to actually fly our camera through this. So that's pretty easy. We're just going to create a camera object, click into it, and just go to the beginning here. Uh, let's go to maybe somewhere around, I don't know, I'll click back here. And we'll set a keyframe, scroll forward in time, and we're just going to zoom through here. And as you can see, the transparency is kind of coming through uh, and let's see, we'll just keep going through here a little bit. I might actually just go into my coordinates and zoom forward on my Z property. And right about there, I will just set a keyframe. And now when I go back in time, we're going to see that it plays forward pretty quick. But you're going to notice that we're having a lot of this cool kind of cloud um, texture coming in here. And when you play this and you set it up a little bit better than I did, you're going to notice that you start to have this uh, really, really cool look. Um, and it looks totally realistic. Um, I, I spent two seconds putting this one together. But when you're doing like a title sequence for a movie, perhaps, or, or really just anything that needs to be epic, like flying down to the world for some animation, uh, this is a really, really cool and practical technique. And it's it's a lot easier to set up in cinema than it is in After Effects. Um, so I recommend checking it out. It's a lot of fun. 
Uh, you can also, with the same technique, you can grab images for like projection mapping um, or really just anything. I mean, you could cut out a tree in Photoshop or grab a PNG of a tree and put that in the background and use the same look at camera technique to uh, make it look like it's actually in the environment. So anyway, this was the uh, quick render clouds in Cinema 4D today. Uh, I know it's kind of an odd video, uh, but I thought it was a fun little technique and I really wanted to share it. So I hope you had some fun with today's video and I'll catch you later. Peace out and get your learn on.